Nation of Fit and Ten is day 51, and this means that we have 19 days to go, which means we are now in the teens of days left. I want to remind you that you can still make some really good change in three weeks. It could still be a pound up to maybe three pounds of fat loss. Three pounds is very aggressive, but it's happening with people. Uh, so that adds up. So every week, every day, every waking hour, and every non-waking hour actually matters, okay? So just a reminder to put in uh, as much effort as you can every single day. Still missing four people for the scan, so I could name you right now, but I won't. I don't know, I feel like I should, but I won't. So please get in for your scan ASAP. All right, um, more of your feedback here. By the way, I'm, uh, I'm at November 4th right now. Name something specific you can improve on for the following week. I was away on vacation past, sorry, I was away, I was on vacation this weekend past. A trip that was planned months ago and so I didn't stick to my diet. I didn't go completely overboard, but definitely ate and drank more than I should have. Did about 15, 15,000 K steps on each of the vacation days and I'm back on the wagon since I got back and planning to do four cardio sessions this week. Yeah, you know, the, the, um, you know, kudos to you for doing 15,000 uh, K a day. That's obviously, that's great. Um, but uh, yeah, one thing you have to be aware of, and I know it's all said and done, but this is just a general message to everybody, of course, is you can do a lot of damage. You can do a lot of damage in one meal. I know I can do a lot of damage in one meal. I can eat a lot of food in one meal. Uh, you can definitely do a lot of damage over a number of days. So, um, you know, if you it just just kind of think of it as this challenge, you're digging a hole, and then any days where you are off, and this would depend on how much you're off, obviously, you're filling back that hole, right? So, you know, you can think of this as steps forward, steps back. Obviously, you know, we're not going to harp on this, right? It's just what happened, happened. Again, this was planned months ago get back on the wagon and we keep moving forward. But I just wanna let you know that days off or days, I don't wanna say days off, but when we create uh, damage, when we go off, you know, this can sometimes be a lot off, okay? Depending on on on, uh, on what you're eating and, and, you know, just how much you're indulging essentially. Okay, name something specific you need help with. I'm enjoying my cardio sessions, mostly spin, but wonder if I should mix it up. I use kettlebell classes and enjoy those for cardio and toning benefits. Are kettlebell workouts classified as cardio or resistance? All right, so just coming back to your toning comment here. So toning is a bit of a misnomer. Toning simply means that you are hypertrophying the muscle, you are growing the muscle and you are at least not putting on any, any fat, you're either that fat in the area is staying consistent or you're losing fat in that area as well at the same time as hypertrophying the muscle. So what happens is, you know, fat is obviously not dense, muscle is. When we increase the level of dense tissue versus non-dense tissue, what, what does that look like? It looks overall harder. We're getting more density versus non-density, right? This is toning. Toning doesn't happen, there's nothing, uh, it's not like if you do high reps, you tone, and then if you do low reps, you bulk or something like that. You know, a lot of people think that this is just this is just nonsense. In fact, if we want to look at the 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 fiber distributions in a muscle, if you take your fast twitch fibers, the ones that are responsible for more force production, those are the the fibers that have the ability to hypertrophy the most. And if you look at something that's more glycolytic, something that's sorry, more oxidative a slow twitch muscle fiber is something that's to be more supportive for say long distance or, or long duration, low intensity activities. These are gonna be less, uh, much less, uh, you're, not gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to hypertrophy these muscle fibers as much. So when we want to tone, in fact, we want to train heavy. When we want to lose fat, we want to burn calories, right? That's what we want, we wanna lose, we wanna, we wanna chew away through energy. Um, so when you want to tone, I want to just remind you, when you want to tone, when you want to tone, you want to go uh, heavy on the weights. Okay, when I say heavy, we're talking about failure of, you know, rep range. Basically, we want a muscle to fail somewhere in that, 
you know, fit, uh, 20 to, you know, 90 second range, somewhere in there, okay? Or we could think of this as reps of five to 25 or something, okay? That is muscle toning. When we do activities that burn a lot of energy and we lose fat, that can look like toning as well because we're losing fat. And if the musculature is staying the same in that area, or maybe there, maybe maybe you are hypertrophying a little bit, then obviously it's going to look like toning, right? So just be aware of that. Okay, are kettlebell workouts classified as cardio or resistance? Okay, generally speaking, it depends on how the class is devised and what you do and how heavy the kettlebells are. But generally speaking, they're more cardio based. Every form of exercise, to some degree or another, is resistance based. If it if you're just you know, if it's not, you're basically just lying around doing nothing. You're working against some level of resistance, but I know that's not what you're asking. You're asking, you know, if I'm doing kettlebells, is that, is there more, is this a more of considered in the resistance box or the cardio box? Generally speaking, more the cardio box. If you're using lighter kettlebells and you're going, you know, relatively nonstop for whatever, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, definitely more cardio. If you're doing heavier kettlebells and you're doing you know, I don't know, 10 or 15 reps, let's say on kettlebell swings, maybe you're doing something different. Maybe you're doing, um, um, you know, some other kettlebell movement, um, like a, a, a Turkish get up or something like that. These are going to be more strength based. That's not to say that they're not cardiovascular. You know, you know this, right? If you just do a 10 rep squat heavy, you are out of breath, right? So it is very cardiovascular, but it's only cardiovascular for two minutes or or, or a minute, right? Yeah, you know, not two minutes. Maybe two. Maybe it takes you. How long to do ten reps on a squat? Good form, good form, good, um, good control. Probably a minute, okay, or close to. So that's cardiovascular for that time, but we don't really consider it cardiovascular because it's not like we're working hard for you know half an hour, an hour or more or something like that. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies. Just think of it this way: heavy kettlebell movements where you're taking breaks, more resistance based. Kettlebell movements where it's like pretty much nonstop. Um, that's, that's more good, going to be more cardio based. Okay. Uh, seven Let's get the message of the day. Oh, I like this one. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change, uh, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. This is very, very true. Um, I, I give many, many examples for, of myself here that, for this, but I think this is, you know, uh, there are so many things that I think can happen in our lives where we're like, you know, why does this happen to me? Or why is this difficult? Or, but I think, you know, sometimes when you look at it in a different light, so for example, um, I tend to look at things if something comes up and I think, well, why is it that it seems like this is so challenging for me? Or why why do I have to go through this and maybe somebody else doesn't? I might just think, I might, I'll say to myself, well, maybe I'm just more cut out for it than maybe somebody else for this particular thing, right? So whether that's true or not, right? But the point is, is when you change, when you change the way you want to look at certain things, it actually can make that thing that you're dealing with or whatever it may be, it, it can, it can change certainly the way that you feel about it and it'll change your, 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 your mindset about it. Right. So, um, if you can try to twist everything and put it in a positive light, I do think that this is, uh, I, I do think that this is a healthy thing to do for oneself. All right. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemies and then we want to fight something that is inevitable, right? That's always the worst, right? It's like, well, you got to deal with it regardless. So why are you fighting it, right? Why are you making the situation worse? You know, you have to do it. So let's just do it. Uh, and I'm not speaking just on the challenge. I'm just talking about something in your life just happens, right? Like whatever you get into a fender bender or something, right? You just, you know, you can make the you, We all know we can make situations worse, right? So it's always about trying to make that situation the best and maybe trying to look at it in a light that's like, you know, maybe somehow, some way, this is a good thing for me. Right? Or maybe somehow, some way that, you know, what did I learn from this? Right? What can I take away from this? So anyways, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change, right? All right. 
Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself for the love of God. Give some gratitude, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. 19 days to go. Let's do this. See you guys.